welcome to part 3 of uh, thermosphere reposition technique, where we will specifically say about the different applications of this particular technique. So, as we mentioned that uh, there are wide varieties of techniques available under th thermosphere deposition and depending on the materials which you are going to choose, you can do different kinds of uh, coating uh, by application of different kind of uh, technique actually. So, that coating materials may be polymeric, may be metallic, may be ceramic, may be cermates, may be metal matrix composites. So, any materials can be used for coating purpose and may be for corrosion resistance application, may be for high temperature oxidation resistance application, may be for wear resistance applications. So, this particular technique can also be applied for hard facing purpose, where basic purpose is to improve the abrasive wear resistance to a large extent for uh, different components and you call it as hard facing. For example, hard facing may be applied for deposition on for the development of coating on turbine parts, crossing equipments, hammer mills, plug mills, forging dies, rebuilding work tools, knife edges, and mixing blades, extruder screws, roll surfaces, forming dies. So, where everywhere if you see the application uh, areas, you will find that in all the application areas, you need different types of wear resistance coating. For example, if you see turbine parts here, you will find that the main uh, main coating is main uh, application is the coating for erosion resistance application. Crossing equipment you will find that gauging wear is the main problem. Hammer mills you will find that impact wear is of major trouble. Plug mills again you will find that impact wear is of major trouble. Forging dry again you will find that that is typical impact wear. The rebuilding work, work tools again uh, it is a kind of uh, typical uh, gouging wear and knife edges again you will find that uh, high stress abrasive wear is there. Hmm. Mixing blades again you will find that main wear is uh, basically uh, typical uh, polishing wear, extruder screws there is again typical uh, gouging wear, rolled surfaces again gouging wear. Then forming dies impact wear, so oil well drills there is erosive wear. Digging tools again you will find that main wear is the abrasive wear and also adhesive wear. So, bracket sheet also different types of wears are uh, existing particularly sometimes fatigue wear is also there, tractor threads again you will find that their high stress, uh, high stress wear is the abrasive wear is there, earth moving equipment again low stress abrasive wear. Valve surfaces again you will find that adhesive wear is there. So, like that different types of wears are uh, there in practice where these hard, hard faced materials are used and these all materials can be deposited by typical thermosphere deposition technique. So, now if you quickly go through the uh, different uh, material properties which are required for different wear application you will find that for abrasive wear application it is very important that the material should have the harder as well as should have very good fracture uh, uh, toughness, fatigue strength uh, should also be quite high. So, where microstructure and composition plays very important role and even different types of wear if you see in different types of wear different properties play role. For example, if it is gauging wear you will find that their compressive strength as well as the fracture resistance is very important. Polishing wear it is the hardness and that uh, typical uh, microstructure which is important, then cavitation where again toughness, alloy composition as microstructure and corrosion resistance property is important. Inorsive wire you will find that hardness and uh, kind of phases which are there in the material is important. Fretting wire you will find that toughness and hardness important, galling wire again hardness is very important, adhesive wire composition as well as hardness is important like that in different wires different material properties are important and this is this acts as a kind of guideline to choose the material for coating application. So, whenever you are interested to uh, tailor any kind of wear, uh, wear property or wear resistance, you have to take these all factors into consideration to choose proper material and so that you, it gives you the proper uh, properties onto the surface. And depending on the material you choose naturally, 
you have to choose the proper technique which you are applying for uh, spraying purpose. Like tool materials if you see there are different tool materials available tool steels, alloy steels, carbon steels, then stainless steel, cemented carbides these different tools are available. So, different tool ceramics are available, non ferrous materials are available, elastomers are available. So, different materials can be coated uh, for tool purpose, tool making purposes and here basically uh, this is very important because again depending on the application you have to choose the proper material and then proper coating technique. Then as I mentioned you hardness is very important parameter. So, you will find that large numbers of materials are available which are having lot difference in hardness like starting from typical uh, normal steel cold work low carbon steel to like nitro alloy or carburized grade steel. So, you can go from 100 to around 700 uh, HP. So, different hardness uh, values uh, are there for different materials. Again for material selection for a particular application you choose the material based on your required hardness for the required application. So, whenever you talk about the wear resistance you can choose the proper material with the desired hardness. Now, if you see the different types of materials again it may be pure metal with different hardness. So, if it is for for example, if you are interested to de develop a coating which should have very good anti friction property then you go for tin coating uh, as a tin coating and pure metal tin you use for coating material. If you are interested to develop a coating for high temperature oxidation resistance application use aluminum as coating. You can use uh, tungsten or nickel as coating where you require both corrosion resistance as well as uh, erosion resistance. Tantalum may be used as coating material and molybdenum also may be used as coating material. So, different pure metals are available in nature. Alloys are available like nickel based alloy, chromium based alloy, stainless steel, bronzes, steels and iron nickel, uh, iron, molybdenum iron nickel alloys. There are different types of sarmates available which are basically ceramic based and these particular sarmates offer very good uh, hardness as well as it is having little higher toughness than that of ceramic materials. Metal composition composites are available, intermittently compounds are available which offer high strength as well as uh, high temperature oxidation resistance and uh, ceramics are available different types of ceramics which offer uh, very high hardness and for some of the wear application where you do not need much toughness for your resistance purpose uh, for corrosion resistance purpose you can use ceramic coating and polymers are also available which are mostly applied for anti friction property enhancement and also sometimes also for improving the uh, slurry erosion property enhancement you just use polymer or composite coating. So, these are different materials available in practice which may be thermal spray deposited because there is no bar as I mentioned you thermal spray deposition is a very much versatile technique. So, you can use any material as the precursor for thermal spray deposition process. Uh, this is the applications of these particular uh, areas application areas of the uh, coating where uh, you need to have very good wear resistance for wear resistance for example, it is in uh, and different materials. So, this is a chart actually which is very important and acts as a guideline for choice of proper material for different purposes actually and the uh, accordingly you can have the different coating techniques for this particular uh, applications. Again this is for a typical hard, hard hardness chart which is available which are all documented. So, these all are documented things. So, these acts as a kind of guidelines for the proper choice of material for specific applications. So, but what is important here is that when you choose the material for specific application naturally you have to choose the proper technique which is again equally important. So, if it is metallic system you have to go for that uh, flame spraying deposition technique or if it is uh, for example, uh, metal matrix composite you have to go for uh, plasma spray deposition technique. If it is ceramics or sarmates you have to go for plasma spraying deposition technique. If it is for example, nanostructured material or bulk metallic glass you have to go for kinetic spraying technique. 
So, depending on the kind of material which you are going to use for spraying, you have to choose proper techniques. So, this is typical hard face alloys application. So, you will find that maximum alloys which are used as hard face there iron and chromium based alloys and apart from that there are manganese steel which is very much applied for that tool application. Then copper based alloys uh, can be applied uh, quite nicely, composites can be applied, nickel based and other uh, materials is nothing but the bar chart depending on the uh, statistical value or statistical, applica statistical analysis uh, of application of different materials. So, now if you particularly go through the application in different sectors, you will find that in uh, aeronautical or space sectors uh, there are major applications of thermal spray deposition uh, technique. They may be applied for adhesive wear applications, improve adhesive wear enhanced property enhancement, then may be for thermal barrier property enhancement, they may be for abrasion wear resistance application or high temperature corrosion application. So, you will find that different parts uh, can require or can demand different properties. So, depending on the properties which you are uh, looking for for a particular uh, purpose, you have to choose the materials for coating. For example, if you are interested to develop a coating for improved adhesive wear resistance, then there you should have higher hardness and you should also have very low coefficient of friction. In addition to that, you should have the tough coating. So, for adhesive wear resistance application, you can apply uh, tungsten carbide cover that sarmates, you can use uh, chromium carbide and uh, nickel composite, you can apply alumina or uh, chromium oxide uh, and the techniques are usually uh, plasma spraying technique, um, especially when it is ceramic materials, but when it is sarmates, you can use high velocity oxy fuel technique or maybe detonation grant spraying technique. So, for adhesive uh, wear purpose, you have to have uh, very tough and hard coating uh, on the surface. Whenever it is for example, abrasive wear uh, the, the typical uh, application or components which are subjected to ad adhesive wear they are fan blade clappers, straight starter blades and uh, film tube locations. So, whenever you talk about the adhesive abrasive wear usually for abrasive wear you basically uh, apply uh, um, aluminum silicon uh, sprayed uh, which is sprayed by uh, flame spraying operation, then aluminum silicon plus polyester by air plasma spraying operation, composite of conictoly and boron nitride by air plasma spraying again conictoly by vacuum plasma, spray, uh, plasma spraying. So, this is applied again in turbine ring. So, when you talk about high temperature corrosion resistance, then you have to look for the materials which offers high temperature corrosion resistance. For example, nicroly, so nicroly uh, yttrium titanium, then uh, these all things uh, are applied on turbine vents, turbine blades, those particular components uh, they are subject which are subjected to high temperature corrosion, there you have to look for the corrosion resistance coating. Now, thermal barrier coating is another place of application of the um, this particular uh, thermal spray deposition technique. Particularly for the thermal barrier coating, you have to apply the plasma spray air plasma spray deposition unit because thermal barrier coatings are basically oxide based uh, ceramic coating, mostly they are ita stabilized or zirconia and uh, they are not directly applied onto the surface of the substrate because if they are applied directly onto the surface of the substrate, there will be chance of spoliation. So, usually they are applied on the bond coat uh, prior to application of this particular thermal barrier coating. You have to apply a very thin bond coating which is conictoly as bond coating because uh, conictoly is having the coefficient of thermal expansion between metal as that of and that of ceramic. So, it basically uh, reduces the stress at the interface to a large level and uh, it also offers very good high temperature oxidation resistance property. So, usually this particular uh, the component parts which are subjected to uh, this, ha this particular thermal barrier coating, their turbine blades, their combustion cans, 
combustion veins and uh, these are the component which are basically subjected to this particular uh, thermal barrier coating. So, this is duplex because uh, the cone crowley coating is applied on top of the uh, bare parts after sandblasting and then they are subjected to uh, typical thermal barrier coating. So, it is important that you prepare the parts very nicely uh, prior to um, that prior to uh, the plasma straying or thermal straying operation. Then if you talk about the sea building and naval sectors, there are a lot of problems of erosion, corrosion and uh, cavitation erosion. So, there there is lot of applications of the thermal spray deposition technique particularly in sea propeller your sea fall you will find that this particular sea fall is subjected to uh, marine uh, particularly whenever it is in marine environment you will find that there will be problem of corrosion particularly pitting corrosion there is also the problem of gravitation erosion corrosion there will be also the problem of the microbial corrosion. So, these sea falls are basically cladded with uh, or sometimes with their uh, sprayed with the copper nickel alloy so that they are, uh, their antibacterial property is increased, antibacterial cor corrosion resistance is increased and they are also coated with uh, sarmates and also uh, metal matrix composite by EGF spraying so that you get very good wear resistance surface and also you can add chromium in addition to that so that you get very good corrosion resistance property in aqueous environment. Similarly, is that steam valve stems, then non-skid helicopter flight deck and then marine gas turbine engines, these all are the areas where these are the components where there is lot of applications of the thermal spray deposition techniques. So, uh, in general you can say that this particular technique is uh, lot of techniques are there and it can be applied for metal coating, ceramic coating or metal matrix composite coating, but proper choice of material is very important so that you get proper properties on the surface. And if you are interested to develop the coating for uh, typical uh, aqueous corrosion resistance application, you have to look for, you can look for either barrier coating like you can deposit uh, typical polyester coating onto the surface of the uh, any material which, uh, which is subjected to very low temperature. So, that uh, you get, uh, you do not, it does not really corrode in normal environment uh, or otherwise you can also go for sacrificial coating like zinc coating. So, usually if you talk about zinc coating, aluminum coating, these coatings are done by wire frame spraying technique uh, or arc spraying technique because in both the techniques you end up with a uh, very good structure and uh, their efficiency is quite high because if you talk about wire arc spraying then you will find that its efficiency is quite high because there is no loss at all if you have optimize the parameters. Uh, in contrast to that of uh, powder frame spray process where lot of powder is lost in the air because of the uh, because of the uh, low, low efficiency of the process and also because powders can fly away when you do spraying. So, uh, for uh, low melting material deposition for corrosion resistance purpose you do flame spraying or maybe you do um, that arc spraying operation. Whenever you are interested to develop the uh, typical uh, barrier coating, you can go for tin coating for example, again this is low melting temperature coating, there you can go for flame spraying operation for coating purpose. So, another type of coating which may be applied for corrosion resistance application is for example, if you have a very cheap mild steel substrate or mild steel base on top of which you are interested to have very good uh, corrosion resistance uh, in the marine environment particularly, you can go for the AISI 304 steel or 316 stainless steel coating. You take the stainless steel powder and then deposit it by uh, flame straying process and uh, but one of the biggest limitation of this particularly straying based technique is that in this spraying based technique you end up with lot of porosities on the surface. Though those are not interconnected, but again surface porosity can lead to accumulation of the uh, aqueous media on the surface. So, if you are interested to get rid of this particular problem, you have to go for 
uh, either sealing operation. So, wax sealing you can do uh, or otherwise you can also go for surface melting operation. It has been observed that if you just go on uh, develop the plasma spray or processing and coating by plasma spray processing and subsequently you do melt it using high power laser beam, you end up with a structure which is a pro free and as well as which is very nice and having improved corrosion resistance property on the surface. For example, it is observed that AISI 304 when it is subjected to uh, thermal spray deposition of molybdenum, you will get uh, deterioration in the uh, pitting corrosion resistance property, but when the same coating is melted using the laser beam, you get very high uh, pitting corrosion resistance of this particular coating. So, you can always go on combining the um, two or three techniques to get the best result in terms of the desired properties on the surface. It has also been observed that necro nickel chromium silicon boron necro CV coating is very much interesting coating which is self fluxing alloy and uh, which can be applied for wear resistance application as well as can be applied for uh, hot corrosion resistance application when it is deposited by HUF spraying technique. Though it is uh, completely dense having 98 to 99 percent density and offers very good corrosion resistance uh, and also wear resistance when it is subjected to laser melting you will find that there is microstructure refinement, homogenization and formation of nano boride dispersed phase onto the surface of the substrate and when it is done naturally you end up with a very good wear resistance even superior corrosion resistance property on the surface of the coating. So, hybrid coating technology and its application is the uh, is a um, uh, gradual shift of this particular technique where you are basically applying two or three different techniques to get the best result onto the component. So, uh, after these all things I would like to say some of our examples of the application of this coating on two different sectors one is uh, that high temperature oxidation resistance uh, purpose that is thermal barrier coating another one is for biological property uh, enhancement purpose bio implant in bound bio implant for uh, applications uh, the application of thermal spray deposition. So, as I mentioned you thermal barrier coating is a kind of oxide based coating which when applied onto the surface of the substrate it offers the uh, high temperature oxidation resistance property significantly, but uh, thermal barrier coating itself does not offer oxidation resistance property, but it acts as a kind of insulating barrier for uh, insulating barrier onto the surface of the substrate. So, actual temperature experienced by the sub substrate is reduced to a great level. So, for example, by the application of yttria stabilized zirconia thermal barrier coating, the um, temperature uh, inf the temperature experienced by this particular uh, nickel based or iron based super, super alloy can be reduced by 50 to 100 degree Celsius. So, this reduction is in temperature is very much helpful because, because of the reduction in temperature naturally you will find that the overall oxidation or overall the service life of the component increases to a large extent. So, usually you will find that uh, this thermal barrier coating uh, is uh, they are ceramic in nature. So, they are basically applied by plasma spray deposition technique. So, but it consists of uh, three different components one is uh, bond coat another one is that top coat and, uh, and third one is the thermally grown oxide layer. So, when you talk about the this particular thermal barrier coating usually it is applied onto the surface of the substrate uh, and prior to application of the coating you have to apply a very thin bond coat. So, thin means thickness is around 40 to 50 micron. So, this bond coat usually is having different can have different composition whenever you talk about the aerospace applications high temperature oxidation resistance applications where the there is no humidity there it is uh, cobalt conicroly based coating. On the other hand, if it is having high level of humidity, then your chromium content in the coating increases to a large extent. So, depending on the 
kind of coating you are applying kind of applications the coating is your bond coat uh, composition also varies, but basic purpose of the bond coat is to have a kind of uh, to increase the adherence of the top coat by reducing the coefficient of thermal expansion or uh, in between. So, that the less stress is uh, generated in the uh, at the interface between the coating and substrate, because usually bond coat is having uh, the coefficient of thermal expansion between top coat and that of uh, substrate. And another purpose of applying bond coat is that when you apply bond coat, the bond coat offers the oxidation resistance or corrosion resistance property uh, of the substrate. Because as I mentioned you top coat uh, is not really the coating for oxidation resistance purpose, but it is the coating for acting as a kind of insulating barrier. But bond coat is the coating which basically offers the high temperature oxidation resistance or aqueous corrosion resistance of the substrate. So, usually whenever you have the bond coat and top coat uh, you will find that uh, gradually when you expose the whole combination into uh, environment you will find that the bond coat get oxidized and uh, because of the transportation of the oxygen uh, through the top coat, top coat is usually porous in nature. Uh, Porosity is a desired in the top coat because the whole combinations are usually subjected to uh, thermal cyclic stress. So, whenever it is subjected to thermal cyclic stress, lot of stress is arrested in the coating. So, you should have lot of uh, defects in the coating so that the stress is accommodated in the defected side. So, but defects are also not good because because of presence of defects there is chance of oxygen ingress. So, that oxygen usually reacts with the bond coat surface and then forms thermally grown oxide layer. So, thermally grown oxide layer is also part of the whole system. So, whenever you just expose the system to uh, air or maybe the aqueous media you will find that depending on the media whatever it may be there will be oxide layer formation and that is called thermally grown oxide layer. And thermally grown oxide layer basically protects the surface again further from oxidation, but it also is not really constant thickness it increases with the time as you go on increasing the time thermally grown oxide layer thickness grows and it in increases its thickness and you will find that when the thermally grown oxide layer reaches a thickness of 5 to 6 micron there will be the damage of the um, coating the coating fails actually. So, controlling the thickness or kinetics of the thermally go grown oxide layer is the major tricks in enhancing the uh, lifetime of the component. So, for that it is important that you design the top coating composition, you choose proper material for the top coating and also proper coating, uh, coating technique. So, this is the thermal barrier coating where there is lot of applications of the uh, plasma spray deposition technique as well as HVF deposition, HVF spraying deposition technique. Usually top coat is applied by plasma spraying technique, but the bond coat is applied by HVF spraying technique. So, that there is no um, not much porosities or flaws in the bond coat, but in top coat there has to be some flaws or some porosities. So, that the stress relaxation is possible in the top coat. Top coat can also be developed by electron beam physical vapor deposition technique. But plasma spraying is also a kind of technique where uh, which can be applied for development of the top coat. So, this particular thermal barrier coating is usually applied in IC engines, scramjets, and ramjet combustor, then rocket nozzle spray, space re entry vehicles, combustion sections of the aircraft carbon engines, these all sectors. So, now uh, th th that is all and thank you very much in the next slide I will discuss about the details about and also the future uh, direction of research on the development of the thermal barrier coating.